Hi, I'm Amanda Paris. Welcome to The Filmmakers. This is a special edition because I'm here with Lena Waithe and Melina Matsukas, the geniuses behind the new film, Queen and Slim. You failed to execute a turn signal back there. Put your hands on ahead and get on the ground now. Are you serious? Get on the ground! Why is he under arrest? He's back in the car! I am an attorney! Damn, I'm just reaching for my cell phone! <laughs> Well, thank you both so much for coming. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm you. so excited. I got to see the film a couple of weeks ago, and I have a million questions that <laughs> I want to get through. But let's start first with how you all met. I heard that you met through Issa Rae at a party. Is mm -hmm. that correct? <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. our true first meeting. OK, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I heard Lena tell the story. I want to hear from Melina. What, what was your you first say? impression of Lena when oh, you Lord. first met her? Are we being honest today? <laughs> yeah, every day. OK, yeah, that's I true. said nice we, things about you, which is like the opposite did. of what you say. Oh. Well, it was our first encounter. So right. we were at this party, and this one was thirsting after Kerry Washington Ooh. and chasing her around the whole place. I was like, who is this girl? Um, no, she was loud. She was bold. She was courageous. Uh, I both liked her, and she got on my nerves. Um, and yeah, that was our first meeting. And then she wanted me to do uh, Master of None, mm -hmm. her episode. and. You know, I am not an episodic director, so I didn't want to be a part of coming into someone else's world. I right. like to create my own world. Um, and she got in touch with us through, yes, Issa Rae and our, uh, my showrunner on Insecure, Prentice Penny. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, my girl Lena wants to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, yeah, of course, that's family. Like, mm -hmm. I always talk to family. Right. So she calls me and, you know, this one's a hustler. She can sell salt to a snail. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's like, you gotta do my, you gotta do my story. Uh, she was like selling me her, her mixtape. Mm. <laughs> it was bomb like, though. Yeah, that's exactly what she was bomb. It's never before seen. And I'm like, all right, girl, like, I don't need all of that because what, what I'll commit to is if I'm passionate about something, mm -hmm. then I will. And yeah, I'm, I was like, I'm send the me the script. Yeah, it's like, okay. And if I love it, I'm there. I'm not going to get pregnant because I don't like having sex with men. Have you tried it? No. I was just like, wow, this is so powerful. I've never seen a black woman come out on television mm -hmm. before. How is that even possible? Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be historic. And then the way that she wrote it, it was just so balanced and genius and poetic um, and really vulnerable. And I fell in love with, with her pen, with her voice. Right. And then we got on set and it was just like, you know, we were sisters that. immediately. It's crazy. Yeah, there was this like immense sense of trust and collaboration and and um, just love. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say you don't do episodic because that episode really is a standalone. Right. Like it has its own style. It has your. <laughs> Which is the other? Yeah. yeah. I, I I did love that I was able to you know yeah build my own mm -hmm. world with, with that one episode. That's right. what that's what moved it. And Aziz was such a a huge supporter of us and, and really support. gave us creative freedom nice. um, mm -hmm. to do what we would. Which I know? loved, which I think is why the episode turned out the way it did Absolutely. because I was like, yeah, we were in our second season. The show mm -hmm. had already won an Emmy for writing. And so we, I think that's what I really learned, I think from Aziz and Alan. It was like, if you have success and they trust you, go do something crazy. Mm, and right. then, so they wanted every episode to be to be standalone. Mm -hmm. They wanted to delve, dive into my character. Um, we knew that the, the character was a little popular and people liked her and people, we just wanted to sort of tell her story. And it just sort of came to us that, like, my coming out would look a lot like Denise's. <laughs> and so, and I just had so many memories and stories about it that Aziz and Alan, th again, thought it was great. And they were like, go for it, write your thing, do what you gotta do. And then we just knew, um, I mean, luckily Aziz was also a fan of Melina. It wasn't like I had to like sell him on that. He was like, let's go get her. Let's go figure it out. And I'm so grateful that I was gotten. Yes. <laughs> so can we talk God. about why you were a fan of Melina's work? What is it about her style, her vision that attracted you? I mean, you? I think we all had seen, because I even go back to like that Pharrell video, you know, which mm -hmm. was, to me, I thought was, I don't know, that was one of the first things to me that really stood out about her use of color, her use of fun, joy, playing with the camera and, um, that was, remember, that was the first, and then obviously the other things that followed, the other music videos, but then ultimately Insecure, which was a huge deal. I had known Issa 
for so long at that point, and I thought it was so inventive and smart to go with somebody like Melina, who hadn't done television before. Mm -hmm. I'm always excited by that, mm -hmm. by giving somebody a shot. Um, mm -hmm. I know she she knows that. Like that's a Lena move. Like like okay, we know she had done TV before, but like so what? Let's see what she would do in the TV no, space. This is exciting. Yeah, yeah, so that's why I was super excited about that. And Insecure looks so beautiful, and um, you know, and I think, and obviously like formation and just all those things. I mean, you kind of can't not be aware of how special she is and how unique she is mm -hmm. and how uh, vibrant her work is. And I think all those things were the reasons why I wanted her to come in and direct Thanksgiving. And, and but, I, but honestly, I didn't know, you never know what the relationship was gonna be. Right. You know, for Same me, it was concept. very, it was very, it was coming from just a creative space for me. I was like, oh, what if Melina did this? And, and then when she came in and we just vibed, it was something I think, I, weird. I don't think it surprised either of us, but it did sort of take us. We're like, oh, huh, we have a very interesting chemistry. We work, mm -hmm. work really well together. And then for the episode to go become this other thing and blow up, I think also kind of spoke. It was almost the people speaking to us saying, yeah. like, we like when y'all come together. Right. We speak the same language. Right. You know, I think that's really special, you know, and, and different from many of my collaborations mm -hmm. in that there's this first a sense of trust, which, you know, especially with Thanksgiving, it was like, that's a really personal story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, do with it what you will. Like, that's why I'm entrusting you with this. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, it's just like, she knows me, you know? It's like, she can translate my values as a person and a filmmaker, what I like, um, onto the page, you know? So that's just really special. So let's yeah. talk about the pages of Queen and Slim. Mm -hmm. When you first read it, how did you know this was the one that you wanted to be your first feature for film? all of those reasons, you know, I had been looking for something in, in the narrative space, and I was like, wow, this speaks, this speaks to me first as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, it was political, it had something to say, it was, it was bold, it was in your face. It was, you know, defying all norms. Mm -hmm. um, it was challenging the status quo. It was genre bending. You know, I love that it starts out as a rom-com and turns into this horror story mm -hmm. for many, you know, and then it's this dramatic love story with, with sprinkles of, of comedy throughout. Right. And I was like, this is how we walk through life, you know, and it had all these elements of, of who I feel like I am as a person mm -hmm. and what I need to satisfy as an artist. Um, and then it was, it was with my sister, you know, and it was this, this beautiful black love story. And I know, like, I knew we had that in our work, re working mm -hmm. relationship. Right. And then, and then to redefine what black love looks like on screen, um, that was just an opportunity that I, I couldn't resist. And it just spoke to me in, in every way, you know, like I would say, if, if, if I had a pen, like she would be my hand, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, she knows me. Um, and, and she says like she wrote it, you know, with me in mind to direct it, but mm -hmm. it's like, I feel like she really wrote my, my experience, yeah. you know, and hopefully, you know, it is a meditation on the black experience and we want people to see themselves in Queen and Slim. And I saw myself in each one of those characters, right. you know, it's really a reflection of us and it was very much a reflection of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. That's why it sort of feels like both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I know in the trailer, Uncle Earl calls them the Black Body and Clyde, mm -hmm. but you guys have been very clear that this is distinctly its own thing. Mm -hmm. Why? What makes Queen and Slim its own thing that shouldn't be compared to that Body and Clyde? I think us. I think we do. You know, um, you know. I think this is a new tale. It's a new story, mm -hmm. and I think that's why even like um, a lot of the critics have been kind, but some struggle with it because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, the tone. It gets they can't put it in a box. Down. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. And also, too, it's in a language that's not theirs, and so therefore they don't want to learn how to speak it. It's like, mm -hmm. There's a lot of those things that you see, you know, um, and particularly, I think it, it's not, you know, look, I think it's not necessarily for white critics to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, but I think there's, an, there's it's very easy and simplistic to, to references the black body and Clyde, mm -hmm. which is why Uncle Earl does that because yeah. he's a simple man in a way, you right. know, and all he knows is like y'all on the run, you done killed somebody. So for him, it's like, OK, you know, he and but that's why I, that's why I put the line in there. Mm -hmm. because yeah, it always brings back to me. Lauren Hill has this line where she says, I added a motherfucker. So you ignorant mm. niggas hear me. Mm. And I was like, that's, that's exactly Uncle Earl saying mm -hmm. that in that moment. And right. it's like also thinking about our history, our history in hip hop and our music right. and like, I know like, you know, that was in there somewhere for oh, you. Oh, for sure. And yes, it's diminishing. We hate like comparing this to any white archetype, you know, right. like that you have to understand what that is in order to understand us. No, right. like we are ourselves. Right, mm -hmm. or this the black version of Arthur, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, nah, it's like, and that's why I love that Roxanne Gay said that that comparison is only skin deep. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, critics have been saying that's a simplistic comparison, mm -hmm. but it's also a comparison somebody makes if they haven't seen the film. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody that sees the movie, yeah, they're not 
walks out and I'm like, right. that's not Bonnie and Clyde at all. No. Mm -hmm. um, because the truth is they aren't criminals. They're civilians. Mm -hmm. They don't get a kick out of killing anybody. No. They don't like robbing folks. And that's a big thing that I put into the script on purpose is that mm -hmm. you see them like, they say, can you please get the truck? Can you right. please do this? I mean, yeah. you know, I also love to me, there's a moment um, where Slim kind of has to go like stand up, you know, hold up a, a, a gas station because he obviously doesn't have any money. And then and I love that the attendant says, you don't look like a killer to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like We're trying to create the antithesis to the criminal because we've right. been criminalized. Exactly. Right, exactly. right. Um, a lot has been said about the visual style, mm. deservedly so. Yes. Like I've never seen a film <laughs> like this ever Thank before. You. Wow. So, literally. Yes. Um, so for the film geeks out there, because this mm -hmm. is the filmmakers, mm -hmm. I wanted to know if you had to make like a playlist for like Criterion Channel or something mm -hmm. of the top five movies that were your visual inspirations Ooh, for this. Oh, yeah. What would be on that list? Oh, this is a good I'm one. Excited. Can we do that? <laughs> yeah. You know them already. But, I'm, but, but there's more. Five, yeah. I'm top five, five, top five. Belly, number yeah, one. I know that. You know, yes. Hype Williams always killing it, showing us how to photograph ourselves, celebrate black bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, he's really, to me, the godfather of modern day black cinema. Hmm. Um, in the Mood for Love. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. It's a beautiful meditation on a love story mm. full of rich colors and passion that I think is in every frame. Uh, Daughters of the Dust mm. and creating something that is so much about a culture and spoken in its own language with no translation. Um, y tu mamá también mm -hmm. for the road trip element mm -hmm. um, and how to approach shooting a car and mm -hmm. then what I get one more yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to a compilation of YouTube videos of black people being pulled over by the cops That's ah, because yeah. so much of this is rooted in reality okay. and you know it's, it really does walk the line between documentary and fantasy at right. times and I wanted each uh, each decision as a, as a filmmaker to be rooted in authenticity. Mm -hmm. And the way I found that was by watching actual people being pulled off and from my own experience, but mm -hmm. uh, it would have to be a compilation of Sandra Bland being called, killed, um, pulled over, Eric Garner being mm -hmm. killed, uh, Tamir Rice being you know murdered in his home state in Cleveland where we started. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that yeah. would have to be the last one. That's yeah. a powerful list. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a powerful list. Uh, Lena, talk to me about the language of the film, which you just briefly mentioned. Uh, yeah. I've heard you before say that you're obsessed with dialogue. What did you mm -hmm. want to express in this film? What did you want to pull out in this film through with the dialogue? Um, it's interesting. I wanted to be simplistic yet poetic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I live between those two worlds. Like, I love poetry. I love prose. I love lyrical writers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously I love listening to Baldwin. I, I read a lot of Langston Hughes mm -hmm. still. Uh, Toni Morrison is, is so, but that's the thing about Toni in that she can be very direct, but also say, you turn a phrase in a way that you've never thought about it before, but yet it speaks so honestly to what you feel. Mm -hmm. She's really good about that. And mm -hmm. I think I, I, I aspire to that, to like to say something um, very plain in a very poetic way and mm -hmm. to say something very real in a very simple way. That, I'm sort of always trying to do that, either simplify it or make it lyrical. Mm -hmm. um, like one of my favorite lines is Slim says, I'm not gonna bend the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's mm -hmm. so much in that one line. Oh man, mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, and I'm trying to find humanity in the, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the voices and I'm trying to find a realism, but, um, but at the heart of it, I'm a poet, you know what I'm saying? And, and so I do like to be poetic. I, I, I do like it to sound musical. It should feel like music you know, people's the conversations. And I also like for sometimes, I always say two characters playing ping pong with words. You know, I love a, taking the air out of a scene and just them sort of like going back and forth. And, mm -hmm. and I try to put, I try to do it, put it on the page for them. So that's always, I always like that is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I never want an actor to feel like they have to ad lib or force something. I hate that. I feel like I'm like, it's, it's, and I actually recently heard an actor say something that was very interesting. Like they were like, when I'm ad-libbing, it's me trying to find it. Mm. And I make it my mission, like if, it's my job to find it for you. Mm. And then you can add to what's on the page mm. with the director and, you know, and, and, and the performance. So for me, I put a lot of responsibility on myself to make sure Melina has everything she needs, you know, for me, not just in the dialogue, particularly in the action lines. I always say that's where I'm talking mm. to the director um, and the actors. Um, but I also want to make sure the actors have everything they need from me right. on the page. Like I mm -hmm. don't, I want to make it sound conversational and I write it that way. Mm -hmm. I write it in black broken English. Mm -hmm. There's a word that I discovered in writing for us is a gong. Mm -hmm. 
gone. Gone is a word that black people have sort of created, which mm -hmm. is like, I'm, like, what you gonna do when you leave here? Mm -hmm. How you gonna outrun the police? Mm -hmm. And, and I found it, like, and I write that word a ton. Mm -hmm. It's G-O-N. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's, it's like, and so there's a thing that I love the way black people speak, too. I love the way we sound. And, and I've told people, like, I found our native tongue, you mm -hmm. know, that we've crafted and it's been strangled and beaten into us mm -hmm. of, like, trying to sound American but not being able to escape our slavery past. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and that's why, but also, too, it's like, it's like our, our past is also Baldwin and Hughes and Zora and Lorraine and all those, 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 those poets and those writers whose job it is to document our experiences and to right. tell our story so that mm -hmm. we aren't forgotten. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is really what Queen and Slim became, where it was like, I wanted to tell our story, all of us. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I was so grateful to Melina breathing life into the script and saying, okay, and here's what it looks like and here's what it feels like. And mm -hmm. so that's why I think the marriage is like, sort of create this like really beautiful product of like just all of us and blackness, it's so great. That's amazing. Yeah. Can we talk about the hair in yes. the film? <laughs> sure. yeah. uh, so many so role, yeah, no, mm -hmm. so many role movies in feature films feature these white women with their hair flowing in mm -hmm. the wind. And I love that for this black woman, freedom meant taking off her mm -hmm. hair and mm -hmm. having short hair, mm -hmm. which I thought was really beautiful. Can we talk about that moment where they shed their old lives and what you wanted that mm -hmm. to look like aesthetically, the aesthetic decisions yeah, around that? Yeah, we really wanted to tell a black hair story. Mm -hmm. um, we started with her twist, you know, like we were going back and forth, like, does she put on a wig? Does she mm -hmm. do this? And, and none of that felt right because mm -hmm. it wasn't us, you know, right. it wasn't her. Um, and then Shiona Tarini, who is our costume designer and one of my best friends, because we were like, well, maybe she gets braids. Maybe she's, I, I always love Jody, looks gorgeous, who plays queen. With, short, with that short hair. Yeah, so I knew yeah. I wanted that yeah. to be one of the looks. And then I was going to maybe add braids or do something. And then she was like, maybe she should start that way. Mm. And when she said that, I was like, that's perfect, right? Because then when she sheds, when she takes out the braids, she becomes herself. Yes. And then it goes back to her line that they're hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's hiding. She's like putting on a mask by becoming who she truly is. Right. And, and I love that concept. Um, and then she's forcing herself to to be open and to be naked to this man that mm -hmm. she's with and, and she's that's why they're able to fall in love right because mm -hmm. she lets her guard down she takes off her armor um and she wears her true crown mm -hmm. um and she becomes our queen and i love the reveal <laughs> that's one of my favorite yeah. visual moments is when she cuts the corner and we see her for the first time mm -hmm. and like, you see her kills me every time you know and also that score too shut Ooh. up yeah <laughs> <laughs> Dev Hines. So Can we, I mean, I am a huge Daniel Kalia stan and mm -hmm. I could talk about him for hours. I love yeah. him so much. So we. But I also want to talk about Jodie Turner Smith mm -hmm. and this discovery that you made in this incredible actress. Yeah. Can you talk about finding her and, and figuring out that she was your queen? Yeah. That, that was a part of our, one of our list of demands, you know, mm -hmm. making the movie, not just final cut and shooting on film and, you know, releasing and shooting it in the same year. But we said we have to break an actress. Mm -hmm. And that also was born out of the fact, too, that we had Daniel, because I don't think. I don't know. I don't know what would have happened. We would have, we, our plan was to go out and search for a queen mm -hmm. and slim, but mm -hmm. Daniel rose his hand. We sat down with him and we're like, okay, this makes sense. You're going to be slim. <laughs> so, but then it was even easier for us to say, we want to find under fresh right. face and we want her to be brown skinned. And, uh, and Carmen Cuba, our amazing casting director, she sent us the first batch of actresses, which was like exciting. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh man. And she was in the first batch. And we were like, okay, That's she's going to be a tough act to follow. <laughs> right. But we just kept thinking, we were like, but you know, it's early, we'll see what happens. And no one could hold a candle. Hmm. It was just ridiculous. It so was. when she came in for the chemistry read, we were just blown away. And, 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 and like Daniel just reacted to her even entering the room, them reading the lines together for the first time. It was magical. And I think it's just, we really do have to break new talent because mm -hmm. particularly in our industry, because there is a list that goes around. It's like the ages are all over the place. The skin tones are all over the place. The different kind of vibe that, but they'll be putting it for the same role. Like right. there have been lists where I've gotten for the role for Tracy Ellis Ross and Yara Shahidi have been on the same list. <laughs> what? I'm not, uh, it's not a joke, but it's wow. like, uh -huh. and I'm going like, how is that pop? Like what? Like yeah. they play mother and daughter on yeah. board. They're like, oh, are we just, well, these are interesting. They're I, black. Yeah. They don't see our differences. It's nuts. It's like, you know, they'll put Tessa Thompson and Cynthia Haribo in the same list. It's ridiculous. But that's right. but the reason why is because they just pull from actors that they've seen, that they right. know, mm -hmm. and big ups to all those actresses, but they're, they're eating, they're all working. And so there's also this thing of like, if it's not 
Tessa Thompson or Janelle Monet, they're like, we can't get it made. And mm -hmm. you're like, but they, these people, like they, they have, the options are out the wazoo. So it's like, and also their schedules are tight. So then, so then they're like, well, sorry, well, let's wait, let's hold until mm -hmm. you can find somebody. So it almost becomes this weird thing where you can't get a thing made unless the black actress that you want to cast in your movie is either Tessa Thompson or Janelle Monet or, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, or, or Zoe Kravitz, you right. know what I'm saying? It's like nuts. And so and we don't get that opportunity often, you know, crazy. in order to diversify the playing field, in order to, you know, have more black actresses out there, like we need to champion yeah. each other. Yeah. You and know, and second, support each other. The second she got in that, like she's now in a, now she became on all she got on all these lists and now mm -hmm. she's in a movie in Germany, you know, with, with my wife that Amazing. she's producing. But it's like but and again, but it's like and my wife even said she was like, I we're about to cast Jody mm -hmm. in our movie because she was on a list, she saw the mm -hmm. thing. So it's, it, 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 that's how quickly it happens. It happens. Just, yeah. It's like all you have to do is give somebody an opportunity. Yeah. So for me, that's a big thing. I think even as I continue to move forward, I'm sure you will too, mm -hmm. about new faces. We have mm -hmm. to introduce new people no, we because always this have. is crazy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're already seeing the power. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of debate right now on black Twitter about black Brits playing Americans, mm -hmm. which I, as a Caribbean person, find hilarious because African-Americans have been I'm playing Caribbean, Caribbean people yes, exactly. with terrible accents oh, for yeah. years I and they don't seem to feel no way about it, I but know. it's fine, whatever. I know. How do you all respond to the critique that neither of your leads was born in the U.S.? So propaganda. many ways. Well, she says propaganda. <laughs> I say this film is about black unity and they views are separ separating us as a way to keep us down mm -hmm. and to keep us oppressed. Mm -hmm. um, this is about black unity, it's about the diaspora. Um, it speaks to all black people. And also, it's not just an African-American story, it's a black in America story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you look at Botham Jean, who was from the Caribbean, who was killed in his own home, my first experience with uh, police brutality, somebody being killed, was Amadou Diallo, right? who was an African immigrant who yeah. was living in the Bronx, yeah. reaching for his wallet, 41 shots. You know, so you said it the other day, like when uh, when you're pulled over in the U.S. by a cop, they're not waiting for an accent. Nope. They just see blackness and they're blinded by that. Mm -hmm. um, so I really don't partake in, in any conversation that's forwarding our separate that separation mm -hmm. as a people. Um, I think we're so connected. Also, you know, Jodi is, is, yeah, she's an immigrant too. She's been in the U.S. since she was seven. So to take away her Americanness is also wrong mm -hmm. to me. You know, like what, so she's supposed to go back to a land that, you know, she hasn't lived in forever in order to work? That doesn't right. make sense. And she identifies more as Jamaican more than anything else. Right, mm -hmm. and then my, my own blackness is through the Caribbean, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I, I was, you know, born and raised in the U.S. So mm -hmm. like, does that make me less black? Right. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a hurdle we as a, as a community need to get over. You yeah. know, it's this idea that like, you know, oh, they kids also, you don't see white people doing that at all. And what happens when American, you know, actors go over and they play Nelson Mandela? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the all, the time, all the time. You know, That's that true. happens. Yeah. All the time. Like, that happens all however, the time. And, and there's Jamaican no Rastas in the movie. Yeah, that does not sound like a Jamaican. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, so, you know, I think that it's about getting the best actor for the role exactly. and creating opportunities worldwide for us mm -hmm. and us coming together as a community to support each other. Right. Because then don't let us cast somebody and they not be good. Right. 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 And then they're going to drag us for that. They're yeah. going to be like, why y'all do that? Mm -hmm. right. So it's like, you can't win. That's why to me, it's like, we're just going to make a great movie. We're going to mm -hmm. cast it the way we see fit. But also too, my thing is this, honestly, if it really gets to that, because it is frustrating, that whole argument, which I think is, is really, it's just, it's not fair to all these actors who are just mm -hmm. trying to make a living. It's like, if you want to cast, like, only American black people are your stuff. Like, go make a movie. Mm -hmm. Go go write a movie, mm -hmm. go direct it, produce it, and cast whoever you want. Right. We'll come watch it, sure. we'll support it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, we're not saying, oh, we don't want that. It's like, I think it, what's unfortunate is they weren't in the room with us. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I think a part of us were like, American this and that, you know, right. we were saying that. We were being a part of that propaganda. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately we had to just go, well, who, who, who moves us when mm -hmm. we hear these words? Mm -hmm. Like who feels right? What makes sense? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think people are getting the movie they got because ultimately we went with two of the two actors that made the most sense for the role and also had a great chemistry. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. we want to give y'all a good movie. Mm -hmm. Like, let's not politicize it. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that makes sense. And let's not add to separating us. Right, don't know, we don't want to be divisive. Because that is infuriating. Honestly. Yes, I agree. Uh, Lena, you've described this moment as a black renaissance, not only in terms of cultural output, but also in terms of control and ownership mm -hmm. over the things that we have. And you kind of briefly mentioned it, but I want to talk more about it. 
what control was important for the two of you to have on this project and how did you manage to have to get it for yourselves? We well the biggest thing was final cut for both mm -hmm. of us. Uh, we both technically have final cut. It was on the it was on the screen and I just sort of technically wanted final cut what was on the page, which means like I could only I would only take notes that I agreed with or that made sense, but particularly like I'm not taking any notes with any white people. Mm -hmm. It was like I worked mm -hmm. with Melina on it um, and I had conversations with Daniel as well that informed some of the things that I tweaked in the script. Um, but that was the most important thing for me mm -hmm. because I think that is where black art gets watered down the most. Mm -hmm. When well-intentioned white executives mm -hmm. try to say, well, let's do this or take mm -hmm. that out or, you know, it's like, or can you make that moment lighter or do we have to see this? Or right. it, it, it softens the blow. And mm -hmm. I think we had no desire to do that. Mm -hmm. um, Give it to you unfiltered and right. through our voice. Yeah. And the reason why we were able to get it is because I think of the work that we had all done, mm -hmm. you know, up until that point, like, people were excited to see what movie Melina would do next. You know, mm -hmm. that's what and I knew that too. So I was like, I got to really come correct mm -hmm. because it ain't like I'm the only one asking her to direct their feature. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then Daniel was like the hottest thing smoking. I mean, he had just, I mean, please, he was in Get Out. He had just finished filming uh, Black Panther. Mm -hmm. So for him to even raise his hand and say, mm -hmm. that's my next thing, we knew also we to not take it lightly. And I was coming off of the Emmy win and like people, yeah. there was some wind at my back. So I think we also used our collective power. power. We knew our worth. Yeah. yeah. We knew our worth like, as a people, as filmmakers and we knew the worth of our culture, mm. yeah. you know, and that wasn't going to be taken or stolen or mistranslated mm -hmm. right. uh, from us. And so, yes, Final Cut was a thing that we, we fought for. Her shooting on film. Me shooting on right. film, me shooting, oh, well, us shooting mm -hmm. on the road. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I really wanted to take a, a journey. And so we started in the north in Cleveland and, and went to, to New Orleans and Mississippi. And ultimately a little bit and, in L.A. And a little yeah. L.A. Um, but I wanted it to feel like a real journey and not be on a stage. Which it does feel like, for uh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, also, us having control of the casting, like we right. talked about. Um, and and really all the crew. Important. Which you guys were able to do because there was a bidding war, ultimately, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. So you guys were able to say who fought, fought yeah, who Yeah, this is how we want to make this film. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you want to make it in this way, then like we can talk. And, mm -hmm. and we partnered with an amazing company called Make Ready. Uh, run by Brad Weston and Pam Abdi, and they've been amazing producing partners mm -hmm. who've really empowered us. And then also, as Lena likes to say, we're able to get out the way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and allow us to make a film in our language without um, without wanting or feeling the need to water it down. Mm -hmm. That's amazingly inspiring. Like, yeah. honestly, that y'all are able to do all of that and have demands and be so clear yeah. and on the same page yeah. about what it is that you wanted as well, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to read a couple of quotes that I read from you guys that hit uh, me so okay. deep in my heart. <laughs> uh, so Melina, and I'm just paraphrasing, mm -hmm. you've said before that you don't get to make mistakes when you're part of the first in the few. Mm -hmm. And Lena, you've said you strive to be excellent because you want to justify the space that you take up. Mm -hmm. And so I felt those quotes so much and related to them so much, but it also felt like a little bit of resent that we have to have this mm -hmm. weight and this burden, that we have to think mm -hmm. about the privilege of our platforms in this way. And uh, can you talk about, or do you see a time when you don't think we'll have to carry that weight and think about things in that way? I do. I see it. I see it happening. I think more films that get made like this, more films that, you know, get made like from Barry Jenkins and McQueen and Ava DuVernay and the more opportunities we bring to each other and support each other as a community. Mm -hmm. um, they are forced to see our value. They're forced to see our worth. Uh, and then we can make all the films uh, that we want. We can really show the diversity of who we are as a people. We can make quiet films, small ones, big ones. Um, you won't have to make films that are just about the best or the first mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. right. um, I, I don't know. I think, I still think black films, or just speaking from our industry, have to do extremely well to be noticed. Mm -hmm. I think if Get Out didn't do what it did at the box office, you know, it would have been hard for it to have an Academy run. For sure. Um, I mean, for them even to, even this is our studio too, but for Universal to release it so early in the year, mm -hmm. speaks to the fact that they didn't think it would be an Oscar contender. Mm -hmm. You don't know, break a movie in February mm -hmm. because it was so popular, they re-released it in October. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Moonlight had to be perfect. Mm -hmm to get best picture yeah. and they still call somebody else's name you know by accident <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yep. um no yeah. shade stuff, stuff stuff happens but um but i think that you know i still think we have to overperform in order to get noticed i think we have a long way to go but yeah. it's like you even saying that you've always said like our film wouldn't have got made had get out not been such mm -hmm. a That's success true. right mm -hmm. so That's it's true. already starting to happen absolutely and if they continue to have success you know hopefully there's real change yeah. right and you don't mm -hmm. feel that burden and that right. pressure yeah but right now right now the it's burden is on us yeah right. sure yeah uh is there another melina and lena project mm -hmm. in the works i'm trying to recruit this bitch right now. <laughs> I look, I hope so. I, I mean, I 
I love working with Melina. It's it's such a, I mean, it's such a beautiful synergy and it's just fun, you know? Mm -hmm. It's always hard because it's never easy, the stuff that we're working on, but it's always rewarding mm -hmm. and, and fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And I always walk away just knowing I'm in good hands. Cause that's the thing too about directors. I mean, it's like, trust. I don't, yeah, mm -hmm. the director, I see the director's cut of whatever, you know, once I leave her. and um, But that's always my favorite thing too. Cause I'm a fan still, even mm -hmm. though I'm a friend, I always look forward to saying, okay, what she about to, you know, <laughs> cook up. But I think too, there's a level of that too. I think Lena knowing, okay, when I got to show Lena, this, this trust. you know, this thing that I've put together with her words and stuff. We just, we, I think we're always trying to impress each other, you, you know. Challenge each other. For sure. Um, and, and just do better. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, I, so. I can't wait to, to, to see what it is. You know, I think obviously Melina has stuff she's working on. I have things I'm working on, um, you know, which I can appreciate. Uh, and so what I think it's about us, you know, when that right thing comes up and the timing is right. <laughs> Look at this one. She is trying to get me to do her next thing. The timing the is timing, right. like it's the right timing. now. <laughs> yes, I'm the like, timing we is got important. something bubbling. The timing is, is no, super it is, important. It is. There'll know? be something. It'll, and, oh my and God. Either way, it's yeah. like, you Please. know, whether we're involved in each other's thing in name, we're always involved in each other's mm -hmm. work. Yeah, you know, we always please. bounce in ideas she off of each other. All the time. We uh, support each other in, in, in every way, yeah. and you know, yeah. and we're here. Like, that's what the community's about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not about credit or, or being, you know, putting my name on your on your projects. It's just yeah. like, I'm here for you whenever you need. Right. She helped me when I had to like, I had to honor B and J for like GLAD <laughs> or something. And I was just mm -hmm. like writing my thing. I wasn't even trying to like, you know, cause I was, it was crazy cause I was on set. I was on set of Queen yeah. of Slim. She was um, leaving my set actually. Yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> Abandoned But me. you like, of anyone, you could, you would appreciate mm. that. So <laughs> I had to like write a thing. So I was like, you better make it good then. <laughs> <laughs> that would like, be worth course, it if you're going to abandon it. Of course. You know, I have to step up. But like, but then that's the thing. It's like, I read it to her and she gave me some thoughts and stuff. It does, it, like the thing, it's like, I'll get her thoughts on whatever. You yeah. know, it's, it, that's what we always do. Mm -hmm. that's so, well, thank you guys both so much for coming. Thank you. Thank, thank you for Reference Toronto with the Legends League that hey. you're rocking yeah. right now. That's big. And uh, congratulations. Thank I'm you. so, I don't know you guys, but I'm so proud of you guys. Aww, so thank you. Thanks for having thank us. You, this is awesome. Yeah.